Oh, what am I doing? Sorry guys, it's just a habit to put my seatbelt on. It's amazing this thing still has a seatbelt. Anyways, welcome back to the Wizard Shop. Another edition of Buy This, Not That. This time we're doing Ford products. Not necessarily the trucks, but everything else. We're going to do a future video with all trucks. But today will be everything else in the category of Ford. There's been several Amazon purchases that I'm really happy to see, real appreciative, and especially one person purchased a lift, and I wanted to say thanks for that. I really appreciate that. I read in the comments a lot, and people say I must be a Ford hater, or I hate Fords, or whatever. And some of them I do, but I don't hate all of them. I've actually owned several Fords. Even Miss Wizard had a 72 Ford F100. I've had a 73 Ford F100. That was my first Ford, and it was tough as nails. And I've had a few other cars. I've had a Mustang and an Escort. and They were okay cars. They were pretty good. They're not all bad. Not all Fords are bad. But today we're going to go over Buy This Not That of Ford. So let's go ahead and get started. Ford Motor Company is actually one of the founding fathers of the entire auto industry in North America. And they're really the founding father of the assembly line. The whole idea of multiple people doing multiple different parts and the, together at the end is a complete car. Actually behind me is an American icon, Ford Raptor. It was an ex-Border Patrol. You guys have seen that in Hoovy's videos. We're doing a lot of work to it, but I thought it'd be perfect. Ford vehicle behind me, Ford truck. So without further ado, Let's start in the small category, small cars. The one to buy would be 2011 to 2018 Ford Focus. These cars actually look really good. They got a sporty design to them. They're fairly reliable. They, good, they get good gas mileage. They're cheap to maintain. They're cheap to buy. You can get them anywhere from three to 6,000 range. A 2012, 2013 in good shape with 80, 90,000 miles on them. They're a good buy. I, I see lots of them on the road, lots and lots of them on the road. And they all keep chugging along. I haven't seen a lot come into the shop, so they must be doing pretty good. That is the one I recommend to buy in the small category. The one not to buy is 94 to 97 Ford Aspire. These cars were hideous, absolute, I mean, I wouldn't even want to get caught driving one. They're really bad looking. They had main bearing issues with the lower end and they were they were okay reliable. They weren't great. But this is going to be an older car and it's a lot of them have been ragged out. I'll mention a lot of those along as we go along. There's a lot of cars that you shouldn't buy if you catch them on Craigslist cheap. Just don't buy them. And this is one of them. And these, these cars, the Aspires, are so low on power. I mean, they taunt really good fuel economy, but at the expense of what? I mean, they barely can even get on the highway. And like I said, there's a big, they're going to be hard to get parts for. Really, that's a dilemma anymore with any of the early 90s or older cars. You can go to CarQuest, AutoZone, any of the big car parts suppliers. And they'll frequently tell you, how about an alternator for a 94 Ford Taurus? And they're like, no, we don't have them. We can special order them. Okay, how about a water pump for an 89 Ford Bronco? Uh, we'll have to get one out of Kansas City. We don't have them. I mean, this, the parts are just dwindling on those cars. I don't even like to work on them because they're hard to get parts for. They shouldn't be, but they are, unfortunately. The one to buy is 2006 to 2012 Ford Fusion. I think there was a couple of different options. There was a V6 and a four-cylinder option in these models, but they both are pretty good, reliable cars. I've seen some of them in the shop, and they've got pretty good high miles on them, and they're running good, running strong. They actually look fairly good, a de decent-looking car, and they get good gas mileage. They're easy to work on. They're easy to get parts for. They do have issues with the EVAP temperature sensor when they go bad it turns off your air conditioner and the only fix remove the dash and I think it's 14 1500 bucks what I've typically I've never done one myself because no one ever wants to pay the money for it but uh, 
I, I've come across that a few times. And that's one of the bad things. But other than that, they're really a good car. I really do recommend them. They're, they're a good quality car. The one not to buy is 96 to 99 Ford Taurus. And my parents actually owned a Mercury Sable, the Mercury variant of this car. But with a 3 liter V6 especially, they had engine sludge problems that would clog up your heater core. There was at one time three or four different customers I had that had these and once a year, every year, we had to do a heater core flush because there's some sort of corrosion or something going on in the block and it just continually blocks up the heater core. These cars are also unsightly. They're, they're ugly. They look like a catfish. I mean, nah, I wouldn't have one of those. And you say, well, it's just transportation. I just need to get it back and forth point A to point B, but really don't do it. Another reason why I don't recommend this car is that we're running up against this problem a lot. Any kind of extensive repair, even a mid-level repair, very quickly exceeds the value of the car. These cars are worth 800, 1200, 1500 bucks in a poor condition and you might find a good one for 1500, 2000. They're not worth a whole lot. And if you have to have your heater core replaced or something else major goes wrong and it's going to be 1500 bucks, 2 grand just bought another car, a second car, in repairs. So I don't recommend those in the, in the mid-size category. We're going to move on to the large category, the large cars, and the one in this segment to buy is the Ford Crown Victoria from 98 to 2012. There's a reason why law enforcement use these cars. They just don't die. They keep going and going and going. They're comfortable. They're large. They actually get somewhat decent fuel economy. They have the, the basic two-valve 4.6 V8 in them. But I frequently see them with 250 or more thousand miles on them. And the parts are cheap to get. They're readily available because there's so many of them. They built them for so long. And, and uh, government agencies use them for so long. There's parts everywhere for these cars. You can easily fix these cars for 500 bucks usually or less. So Car Wizard? Would you actually recommend them buying a former cop car? No, I don't recommend that because they've been ragged out. They've been run hard. They may only have 120,000 miles on them, but they will drive and operate, and the reliability will be as if it has 400,000 miles on it. You can, you can bet on that. The bushings will be shot. The brakes are probably no good. The transmission's on its last leg. I've seen these cars, and they, I've had ex-cop cars in the shop, and it's like usually the person ends up selling it. They're like, oh my God, this thing is at the end of its life. So I don't recommend that. The one I recommend not to buy is 1980 to 91 LTD Crown Vic. It's the same series of cars, but this is the older model. I have a few customers that actually have these cars. They're so difficult to work on. The, the, the accessories on the motor back in those days in the old five liters, they would have brackets on top of brackets on top of brackets. A water pump job with six or seven hours of tearing accessories and brackets and hoses and stuff off just to get down to the water pump. It, the, guy, the guy was like, the car's almost not even worth that. I mean, it's just, they're hard to work on. They're actually, like I mentioned a minute ago, they're actually getting hard to find parts for. Say, hey, I need a, a fuel pump or something for an, an 87 Crown Vic. And they're like, uh, no, we, it'll be a week before we can get one. It's actually getting hard to get parts, like I said, on these 80s and early 90s vehicles. I guess the Model T and Model A, at some point, they stopped making parts. You don't go to AutoZone and get a Model A part. They finally stopped at some point. And they're finally beginning to stop on these 70s, 80s, and early 90s cars. They're drying up. The demand is going so low that the cost to make the parts is just not worth it. You have to go on eBay if you want to get parts for these. They're very aged. A lot of these may not have high miles, but time has gotten to them, and they just don't, they don't hold up very well with a lot of time. Uh, heater cores, uh, actuators in the dash, leaks, lots of leaks. There's frequently issues going on with charging system, battery starter, and then you're getting reman parts from the parts stores because they don't even make new ones anymore. And that lasts a year, and it's time to put another one on. So I don't recommend those in the large segment. Now we're going to move to the SUV category, and in this category, what I recommend to buy is 2006 to 2010 Ford Explorer. 
typically, especially with a four liter V6. You can get them with a V8, but they're harder to work on. It's crammed, the motor's crammed in there. But with the V6, the parts, again, are readily available. They're cheap to buy. These cars are still all over the road, 200, 300,000 miles are still going. A guy can work on it himself. He can take care of most of the issues himself. They're fairly reliable. They're not so good on gas. But in the segment of SUVs for Ford, I would really recommend those if you're on a budget. You don't want to buy a $30,000 SUV. You can only afford three or four. That's exactly what I would recommend. The one I would recommend not to buy is any of the years of the Ford Edge that have the 3.5 V6. Really any Ford car that has the 3.5 V6. There's something I've run up against that really is a deal killer for these cars and that is the water pump. It is ran by timing chains. You have to pull the whole front of the motor apart and pull the timing chains off for a $40 water pump. You say, well, that's not too bad. You just have to pull that apart. In the Ford Edge, it's a partial motor engine out to get to it. I had one in my shop probably a year and a half ago. The guy said, hey, the water pump's leaking. You know, I just want you to go ahead and put a new one on. And I called him back and I said, you know, this water pump is going to cost you anywhere from $1,600 to two grand to replace it. And he was like, oh my God, why? I said, are you really going to put back old timing chain tensioners, the old timing chains, the old, are we going to put that old stuff back on? I'm not. I'm not going to put the old stuff back on because I don't want to be liable. And so I thought we should have replaced that while you were in there. You know how that goes. Um, he was like, no. He said, stop where you're at. He said, the, the next place this car is going to is the dealership. I'm trading it in. He said, hell no. I'm not spending $2,000 for a water pump. That's not the first time I've seen that on these 3.5 V6s. Probably about five times. My water pump's leaking. I call them. It's going to be a lot of money to fix it. They're like, nope, don't do it. Forget it. I ended up not doing the job. I haven't got to do one of those, and it's strictly because of the cost. So I don't recommend those. Look at that stupid bird in the background. Just like some of Tyler videos, he says, shut up, bird. So that's what I'll say. Shut up, bird. So now we're going to move on to the sports car category. I'm not going to recommend any of the Ford GTs because obviously that's way out of most people's price range. We're talking about cars that the average person can buy. So the ones to buy in the sports car category will be 2005 to 2009 Ford Mustang. And it can be GT, it can be V6. Either one of these cars are really cool. In my opinion, this year range of the Ford Mustang is the best looking Mustang they ever made. After 09, they started making the headlights squinting and like someone squinting to read something or in the tail end of it just, and then even on down to 2012, 14, 15, to me, in my opinion, it just gets worse and worse and worse. It doesn't look like a Mustang anymore. It looks like a Ferrari or something. And that's not what a Mustang is. It's not a Ferrari. But the 05 to 09 range is my favorite. They're, they're also easy to work on. There's plentiful, plentiful parts for them. There's tons of modifications, tons of custom things that a guy can do. You can order basically the whole car through the mail. And if you want to add some exhaust or some cams or different things, you can do that in your backyard. These cars are really cool. They're really, and they're actually very reliable, very reliable. So you got the four liter V6 and you got the 4.6 V8. Both very reliable engines. Now, the, some of them have, do have three valve V6, and they do have some troubles with the cam phasers, but it's not so bad. It's really not nothing compared to the 5.4. So, they've really had a lot of time to actually evolve this car through time. It's gone through different stages and different shapes and sizes and different engines. And I th like I said a minute ago, I really think in the 05 to 09 range, they really got it right. They're pa somewhat powerful reliable they look really good everything is in line to be a really good car but anyways that's what i recommend in the sports category to buy the one not to buy would be 74 78 ford mustang 2. now i know some of you guys say oh come on car wizard don't those aren't even on the road anymore nobody trust me i see them on car them cars on craigslist sometimes they're still for sale 
And in case you're looking and say, oh, wow, it's a Mustang II, uh, 600 bucks, I can go buy it. No, don't do it. They were slow and they were new. If they're out there for sale still, they're completely ragged out. And some teenage kids have had it. They've destroyed it. They've ran the engine into the ground. These are the years of four cylinders and things of that nature, and they just really, they don't have any power. They don't really even have that good of fuel economy. And they don't look good. They look horrible. It doesn't really even look like a Mustang. So those are the ones I recommend not to buy. I know there are not very many out there. There's not a huge following for them in, as much as the current Mustangs and things, but if you run across one on Craigslist and you have that temptation, I'm telling you here, don't do it. Run away. So while we're on the topic of Ford cars, I want you guys to go ahead and put some questions in the comments section that you have about repairs on Ford cars or maybe purchasing a Ford car. Some questions for the car wizard to answer. And here in a few videos down the line, we're going to actually go through, choose some of those questions and answer them for you. It'll be a Q&A on Ford cars. So go ahead and leave some comments and we'll go through those and we'll get a list put together and make a video based on you guys' questions. So if you guys need any tools or want to know what kind of tools I use, check out my Amazon affiliate page. We also have merchandise for sale, hoodies and coffee mugs and shirts and things. Our subscriber base is really growing and I'm real appreciative for you guys for doing that. It's just really going fast and I really am happy about that. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Uh, you won't be disappointed. we got many more cool wizard videos to come. So, thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.